company was recently in news for posting a profit of more than 2000 crores on a revenue base of close to 5000 crores. It's not every day that we come across such success stories. And if that company happens to be an online startup, this becomes even more important. Whenever we talk about online platforms, we talk about funding, we talk about how they are under pressure to cut losses. Here's one example that's shining bright in the Indian startup ecosystem, Zerodha, the online trading platform. Let's learn how they went about it and what did they do different from others. Zerodha recently posted a profit of 2,094 crores, which was an 87% growth year on year on a revenue base of 4,964 crores which was again a whopping 82% growth year on year. This when most online broking platforms are not profitable at all. The nearest competitors of Zerodha like Upstocks or Grow aren't making money. Zerodha has close to about 6.2 million active users as against 5 million active users of Upstocks. So what is it that Zerodha has been doing differently from its competitors? And what are the learning that we can draw from Zerodha's success story? Looking at how Zerodha has gone about building its business, I could identify six differentiating factors. Number one, strategic clarity. Zerodha has been very focused on the serious users of the markets, which are traders. An online trading platform has often two choices to go after traders or go after retail investors. Traders transact daily or weekly and Zerodha charges a certain fee on every trade. Out of its 6.2 million active consumers, majority are traders and Zerodha makes money on each trade. Traders are more serious players and therefore they stick around with the platform and even keep coming back to the platform. So carefully selecting its target audience base helps Zerodha focus and cut its customer acquisition cost, which is where most companies bleed. So this is where Zerodha differentiated itself to begin with at a very strategic level. Two, customer centricity, going after core versus new use. Often in business, we are lured by the possibility of reaching out to a new target segment, a new user base in order to expand our business. However, Zerodha stuck to its core audiences only. It built for them and it continued to improve its products and services for its core audience. It did not go about launching some random functions here and there just to be at par with competition and to be in the shining books of potential venture capitalists. Their focus was on building a profitable business and not really increasing the valuation of the company. Third, pricing strategy, giving services for free or charge money for it. Zerodha charges 200 rupees on every DMAT account opening. Traders and investors who are serious don't mind paying this fee to get access to the platform. Also, it kind of positions Zerodha as a premium platform. And Zerodha also makes money on every single transaction. However, it requires a lot of conviction to charge from day one and not give anything for free. Four, retention strategy, going after subscription model or charging one time. Zerodha charges maintenance charges or annual fee per account per year. This helps build a strong subscription business for Zerodha. It helps in retaining audiences because those who have opened account with Zerodha once decide to stick with it and they keep coming back onto the platform. This also helps Zerodha keep making money out of the user even if the user is not trading. This also works for Zerodha at a different level. It helps Zerodha filter out serious audiences from the casual ones. Fifth, customer acquisition strategy. Zerodha modeled itself around acquiring customers at a very low acquisition cost. They launched with a revenue sharing affiliate model which helped control acquisition cost and Zerodha spent money only on converted audiences. There are many people on YouTube who promote Zerodha as their preferred trading platform. A lot of such affiliates earn lifetime referral fee from Zerodha. And sixth, smart marketing, chasing ROI marketing versus noise marketing. Often it is said that Zerodha spent zero money on marketing. Well, that's not entirely true. Zerodha did marketing, but in a very different way. Zerodha focused on two things. It realized that a large part of trading also involves educating consumers, educating users, educating traders on how they can do things better and make more money and grow their business. So Zerodha did some very smart content marketing. They invested a lot of money in educating customers via varsity, which in return not only helped increase trade volumes, but also helped attract more consumers. And the second thing Zerodha did was influencer money. Well, they did not go the traditional route there and paid a lot of influencers a lot of money. 
but the founders of Zeroda, the Kamath brothers, themselves became influencers of sorts, very similar to what Steve Jobs did for Apple or what Elon Musk does for Tesla. The influence of founders brings in a whole lot of new users onto the platform without spending money with any external part. So friends, these were some of the quick learning I drew from success of Zerodha. Do write to me if you think there were more reasons or you have any point to make about the six reasons that I have quoted. For many more such insights, you can subscribe at Guru Prasoon on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn.